Good, good, okay, good. So let let's wait for others to join. So that your voice now, is low, so that. Is it better now? Yeah, it's better now. May know who is Kumar? Can you come online? Who is Kumar? Okay. Ganesh number. So you can use the node balancing automatically between the servers. Okay. So for that what you have to do is you have to create the servers. Now what I would say is I just want you to create some server. Okay. So I would say this can be a server. So since the auto load balancing is there, automatically it is launching. So what I will do is I will just load balance. No, 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 no. Launch up. Group. So automatically it's launching the instance. First of all, we need to delete it. We will delete it, no issue. So delete this. So after we will terminate the instance. So two instance I have not started it. I have just uh, moved all the instance shut down. But I don't know why it was. So I'm just terminating this instance also, so that nothing will be running. So I'm just going to launch instance. Okay. So a new two instance I'm just going to launch. Okay. The same configuration I'm just going to do. So the new one launch. So now you see. So I have launched one instance and I am just launching other instance too. So I am just uh, making the people as a, sorry, not people, somebody is doing as an organizer job. So web server one. Okay, so this is going to be the web server one and I am just going to launch one more instance. So this is also going to be the web server two. Okay, so within the server we are just going to do the load, load balancing here. Okay, so I am just trying to do the load balancing here. Okay, so this is the server, web server 2, okay, web server 2. Now what we need to do here is, so I am just going to my easy 2 dashboard and checking how many instances are running, maybe two instances will be running. You see now I am trying to connect to this web server 1, okay, so try to install Tomcat on it or uh, Apache on it, simple. So let's make it as a web server. So just install Apache on that machine. So you understand load balancer is nothing but it's going to just reroute the traffic between the servers now. So I'm just going to make that. So apt install HTTP or it's called Apache, right? A P U C H E Apache 2. So right now again I am just going to re-log into one more machine also. So this is my Apache 2 server. So I am just going to connect to this instance also and install Apache on that machine. So what I am doing simply I am just logging to the two machines and just installing the Apache on it. That's it. So this is what I am trying to do it now. So now we will make some difference now. Okay fine. Sudo. SU. So app install Apache 2. 
Correct. Yes. So I have just installed both the Apache two things. So now if I want to connect to the server, if I want to connect to the server, so I can just do that by just using. So the Apache will be up and running. You see what is the home page you see? The home page is, yeah, why it is not coming means I have not given the, uh, what is that, security rules correct. So security reason maybe. So what I'm trying to do here is, so maybe I have lot of security groups, so I need to delete that, so that I will be doing later. So inbound rules, I'm just making all the traffic to be allowed. So that's the reason it was not opening. So now this will be opened and uh, you can also go to the spot other spot instance so which is uh, uh, the one more one so this this one sir, uh, there so, is a lag between your video and audio so sir okay we will i will i will just relog it no issue Now can you check it, guys? First of all, my voice is audible to you. Is Your voice is low, sir. My voice is low. Yeah. I am very sleepy and I am very tired, so that's the reason. So today there is a more work in office. Okay, fine. So here, um, is it better now? My voice is better. Yeah, sir. Okay. So now check whether the lag is there or not. So what I have did is just I have installed the web server on two servers, correct? So you see the web server is there in the two servers. What I did is, so this is server one and this is server two. So this is the server two, I guess, correct? Yes. So this is server two and this is also same, right? So what I will do is we will just first put server one. So this first tab is going to be server one. So both the things I have installed some web server here. Okay, so I have installed the web server here. Okay, so I have installed web server here and uh, this is the server one, this is server one and this is server two. So two things I have did it, okay. But uh, what I am going to do is this is the index page, right? So this is going to be the index page. You can just see where this index page can be there. So normally it is going to be there in the web app folder. Okay, so I know that not web app folder, so there should be something called where www html contents. This is, these are all the html contents in my opinion. Okay, so you see this is the index.html. So the index.html is saying this one, right? So what is this server? This server is server one, correct? The heading is going to be I am just going to modify the header. So, what is the heading? It is, it's a, just a HTML. Okay. So, title is nothing but. Apache Ubuntu Server One Default Page. Okay. So, I am just go putting Server One ELB default page, okay, load balancer. I'm just going to demonstrate the load balancer, so that's the reason I'm just putting like this. Now if I save this, and if I just see this, now, is it something which got uh, changed here? So what I have changed, so, which is Apache Ubuntu server default page, it works. Okay, it works. So, yeah, it's a title actually. So maybe it, it can be server 2 also. So we have changed it. Yeah, Apache Ubuntu default page, okay. So here also it's saying the same one. So I'm just trying to change this one. Let's see what is happening. So
maybe body background color i will try to change it so html html body background color okay so the attribute is nothing but this one the background color is attribute but uh, So I'm just trying to put some headings over here. So let me put some headings here itself. Let me see. I'm just trying to edit the page. Okay. So if there is any hello world is there? Yeah, hello world is there. So this is a program, okay. That's good. So, and uh, I'm just going to change this one. So, to just uh, to, to make some differentiation. So, I'm just going to say this is from the server two, correct? So, two servers I have created in identical way. So, same servers. The application is running. So, server two. This is server two actually physically. Okay. Now, if I just say, you see, hello world. Server two is there. And now I need to put here as a hello world server one. So now after this, this is a prerequisite of a ELB. So just listen this. So what I need to do is I just go to where www. Okay. So HTML. And now we need to just talk about index.html. So here I'm just going to put one more tag here called server2 but not like this so I need to put the header right it is, there is no header here so I just want to put with the header so h1 h1 tag should be there so you see that I am just going to put the HTML tag That's it. So now if I just trigger this one, it's going to say the hello world server 1. And this one is going to be hello world server 2. Correct? So this is what. So now the two servers are there and these two servers are running the same contents. Okay. These two servers are running in the same contents. So both are the identical machine. It means that the grants.var is there. Okay. So the grants.var is there like this. So let's say like that. So now I'm just going to create a ELB. Okay. Now the load balancer I'm just going to create one load balancer. Okay. So I'm just creating a load balancer and uh, all this load balancer is not required for me. Just I'm just deleting it. The previous load balancer is not required. So create a load balancer. Always try to create this kind of classical load balancer. Okay, so it's a default one. So try to create it. So this load, this load, whatever it is coming, so it will be just a given to alter whatever it is there. It, it it will be given to this four servers or two servers, whatever it is. It will be giving in a round robin way automatically. Okay, so this one. Okay, so now just name it ELB. Okay and it is going to be created in default one okay so enable the vpc configurations also and water which is going to come to this server is going to be transferred to this server so same both are http correct so this is the request so if you want to open a web application just like this i am just creating it so it is a default port 8080 okay sorry 80 okay so here it's also 80 so I don't have to select the sub modules and all. Okay, sub VLAN. So please select two sub VLAN. So it's already provided. It. Okay, we have selected the. So automatically it will be selecting the subnet. Okay. So next is assigning the group VLAN subnet plus V space for the load balancer. Okay. So.
So I'm just adding all the things. Okay. So assign the security. So at least select an existing group. So maybe I can just use the default one, default VPC security actions. And after that, I'm just going to say that. Yeah. So health check. It's always going to check the port 80 with the index.html or whatever page if you want. You can just uh, configure here at the path. You can just put the put it here. It's just going to always in the 30 seconds always it tries to check. Okay. So whether it is pingable or not. Otherwise it it will be just say, saying the error to you. So like this it is just a health check. So after that, you can just add the servers. So what are all the servers? You can just do the clustering or sorry, the load balancing (ELB) with this. So server one and server two, which I have created, I'm just going to do the load balancing and uh, this key and all it is nothing. Just review and create. So you see now the load balancer name is ELB and this scheme is internet facing. So it is facing the internet and the port configured is nothing but 8080. So sorry, 80, and it is getting forwarded to the other machine, 80. Okay, inside the round robin, inside the ELB, which is Elastic Load Balancing, and this is a configuration will check. So automatically, by using HTTP, the port 80 is going to be checked for the index.html page. Okay, so in the index.html page will be up and running always. So if it is down, then it will be deleted. So now I have created my ELB. You see, now the load balancer was created. Correct. So now you see this is the load balancer which got created. So now the status is not up. The instance is out of service only. So still it is not reachable. You see the instance is not reachable. Instance registration has not happened here. So again we have to, so it will be happening. The registration will be happening soon, the instance registration. Okay. So what you can do now is you have the DNS name here. You can just use this DNS name of your load balancer and uh, you can just uh, try to open this one. It's not reachable. Wait. Just a moment. I am just going to create a more load balancer. Let's see whether it is, it is working or not. So default as demo, maybe demo. Yes, sorry. So it is going to be working the default VPC. And uh, I am just going to use the same thing. So assign the security group, assign this one. So Normally, it should be up and running actually. So this load balancer should be first showing this server and secondly, it should, it should show this server. So I don't know why it is not happening. It should toggle between the things. So let's see. So just I create enable this one. So I'm not just going to enable this one. So Yes. So this should be up and running actually. That is what uh, we have to do. So it should be up and running. I see. This instance should be up. It should be registered with this load balancer. It is not registering. It is saying that instance registration is still in progress. So we'll see what is that. So why it is still in progress?
mm, maybe that is also a problem we will check it but then i think i have created the instance correctly so no issue i think I, we can log in, log in so that is this is not an issue actually You see, it should work actually. So whatever I am doing should be working. So this is a problem. Since some, I, since it is a free account, few things they are not giving, and that's the reason it is not working properly. They have not given ELB services for us because since we have created a ELB, it should be signed or it should be just uh, mm, attached to that properly. But it is, if it is not attaching, means so it's a problem with our account. So it's my account actually. So problem with my account. They are not giving it. Maybe for you, for your account, it should be working actually. If you are doing this, you see. So this should be working in my opinion. For sure. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I don't know the link. I have to restart everything. How long ago the class was started? Uh, class will go for more than one hour from now. No, no. How long ago the class started? I just, I don't know. I have to restart everything. That's when I, the link got connected. So. Uh, it started about 20 minutes ago, uh, before it started. So I'm talking about the ELB actually, okay, elastic load balancing, and uh, I'm just trying to toggle between the servers. So I have created two servers, web server 1 and web server 2. And I have just installed uh, Apache on it and I said that this is server 1, the same thing is server 1 and same thing is server 2. So if you are just using this ELB, so what happens is first time when you just click enter, it automatically takes you to the server 1. And second time if you just click enter here like this, so it takes to the server 2. So this is what I just want to show you, but it is not working. So it is not our fault, there is some other uh, fault is there, so that's that's the thing we are just trying to solve it out okay so load balancers you see there is a load balancer and whatever we have did is correct only the instance is the problem here is the instance is not in service yeah this is good okay now we, it, it came in service correct previously it was out of service so now okay so now now this became in service. Okay, so now we, it should be working. No? So it became in status, that's fine. So now I need to use this load balancer group, target group. No, I have not created any target group. So, so if I use this DNS name, okay, if I use this DNS name, it should be working. classical load balancer way it is a short description and the resolution
creates its own VPC. That's not a problem. So import configuration for loading edit. Stickness disabled. No, no, no. Security. So default security is there. So maybe it is good only the security. Maybe is it taking some time and it's coming up? No. no. But in your machine it should be working, guys. Okay, actually, so in my machine it may not be working. But if you are doing this correctly, it should. Work. So in my machine it is not working. So it is like our uh, chef knife. I told you, sorry, chef kitchen. I told you, right? So it's the same concept like that. In my machine there is some. In my account there is some issue happened. I guess. Okay. So change the cross load balancer. Just we authorize all the distributor disable and uh, just enabling it, which is correct only. Uh, so this business should be up and running. Why it is not up? Why it is not up and running? That's fine. Okay. So we will try to troubleshoot that. It is telling the page is not available. That is a problem. So this site is not reachable. Actually, whatever we are giving into search the Google. So what is happening here is it is telling me I am making a mistake here. So maybe I am just going to check the index.html. So how should I give the index.html here? So what should, what is so the listener or help check? So it is just you see ping target is this one. So maybe if I'm editing this target, edit health check. So I'm just going to ping the target, which is this one, just a slash. That's enough. So maybe I'm just going to ping this. So let's see now the ping target. So I have saved it, right? So now let's see whether it is it working. Let's see now the instance is up and running or not. Yeah, it is in services there. It is in service, this instance, and uh, is it for everything? So, something this one is working. It is not working. So, what about this ELP which I have created? It? So, this one demo, which is this one is if it is working, means there is something issue. Yeah, stupid one. So I think this is working and that is not working means something there is an issue. You see now the load balancer is working. So now you see server 1 is automatically coming. You see the server 1 is automatically coming here and there the server 2 is coming here. So I am just checking, I am just clicking the single, single one. So you see the load is getting toggled between the server. So this demo, this this ELB is working. I don't know why that the ELB is not working. So this one is working. You see the health check. I just put index.html. Okay. Here also it will be working, but the thing is, it takes some time. So that's a problem. So maybe we can just put some index.html also here. Index IM index.html. So it is taking some time to just register with that. So that is a problem. But uh, the ELB is working. You see, so now this ELB will also be working soon. So it takes some time. You see, now this ELB is working. So now you understand the concept. I'm just putting here the first enter. It showed me server two. 
and again I am putting the same enter here, it is going to server 1. You see, the load is automatically getting toggled between the servers. So now what we have to do, the goal is nothing but, it's a very good concept, interesting if it is working means. So, what will happen here is, okay, let me just go with the new one, it's not working. See, what we need to do is, you have your grand start application, right? So you need to have two servers, okay? So you need to have the two servers with the grand start war application. War. So it means that you have two application server in it. So this is how the real time will be working. So you will be having application server and again the same application server you need to have. Okay. So always this should be there in the auto scaling group. So this server should be there in the auto scaling group with minimum of two instance, always with minimum of two instance and maximum of two six instance it can scale. And between this you need to have the auto scaling group. So whenever the request is coming from, sorry, so when there is a request which is coming from the outside world, it is going to be toggled. So when the outside world is giving the input means, this input is going to be toggled or this is the right way. So this input is going to be toggled between one here and one here. And then even though if the load is getting increased, then you need to mention the auto scaling user, auto scaling, so it should be there in the auto scaling group, right? So this is how the real-time scenario, this infrastructure will be. Understand? So now I can tell you there is a one more way that till now, okay, first of all, are you clear with this ELB? You see it is just talking between the two things. You see now this is also working. So it takes some time. So maybe it is delayed. So always my account is having some latency. Understood this. Mahindra, yes, are you getting the point? Yes. Fine. Uh, Sundar, so, how are we going to mix this uh, ELB and auto scaling? Combine these two okay. concepts. So is it like you find it out? Mahindra Garo. Yes, sir. You find it out. It is not finding. So just uh, there is a small knot is there. Okay. Okay. So I will tell you the. I want you to find out, but I will give one clue. Okay. So with that clue only you you can you can do it. Okay, think in a very real time scenario. So I and now I am going to tell you. Now you understand the concept ELB. So that is my question. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So any anyone is having a doubt in this ELB, which is a very very important concept of uh, AWS. Yes. <laughs> no. Okay. So Sundar, if now, is I got one doubt. Mm -hmm. If it is application mm -hmm. server, then uh, we will be opening a different ports. See, because since you have installed Apache, you have, you are mentioning like the forwarding port as 80 to 80. Exactly. You will be mentioning the forwarding port into different one. Or you inside the server, so that next server should can also have some other port. So you can forward it, but normally it will not be. Actually, because every servers are a mirror, right? Whatever application port here, it's going to be the same port. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. For example, if you have an artifactory, artifactory 8081 should be forwarded to the 8081. Yeah. You cannot just forward to 4041. Yes. Okay, so that's fine. So now you can have your auto scaling, but before, if you want to have the auto scaling, so there is a prerequisite called auto configuration correct auto launch configuration you have to create your uh, create your ubuntu server okay whatever it is leave it i am telling the answer i will not tell the answer now so i will be telling one more concept to you with that you can do it now my concept here is you see now i have created a web service correct i have created a web service here 
Do you agree with me? Yes, sir. Okay. So now every time I don't want to create the Ubuntu machine, create a Java and install the Apache on it. I want the, my image AMI to be downloaded. Okay. So in that case, what you can do? In that case, what you have to do here is so you need to go to the running instance. Okay. And there are something called volumes, okay, or snapshot, okay, snapshot. There is a concept called snapshot. It is called as a EBS, okay. There is a one more service is called EBS. I am going to talk about EBS, okay. What is EBS is nothing but elastic block store, okay. So we are just going to store your uh, data over here but what I need to do here is I just want to create a okay. I'm just deleting everything okay. so I am deleting snapshot because it is AMI is in use that's fine okay okay it's getting used so that's the reason we cannot use it fine leave it so first I need to create delete the image then I need to do it so I'm just going to delete the AMI which is there with me so action 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 deregister the register deregister the new AMI yes I'm just going to deregister it okay and after that after that after that okay so I'm just going to I have deregistered it. That's fine. So bundle does not require. Okay. So here, what what we are going to do is in EBS. What is it? where is EBS? Yeah, EBS. So I'm just going to take a snapshot of a machine. So I'm just going to create a snapshot. So what I want to create? So I just want to create a snapshot, and I just want to need I need the volume for that to create a snapshot. What is the snapshot? I'm just going to take a photo of my AWS machine, so EC2 instance. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to see which volume it is. So what is my volume? So the server name is nothing but, what is my server name? I want web server 1 and web server 2, right? So this is 1. So this is in use. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to say, what is my volume here? The volume, it is ending with 69 I want and it's 92. So any one I want. So it is ending with A69. So this is my volume. Okay, this volume I need to take the snapshot. So the volume is nothing but the hard disk. So create snapshot. I am just going to create my, oh my god, I, what is A69, correct? This is a volume number. Correct, right? Yes, yeah, sir. Is that, Okay, so A69 and the name is going to be web server. So I'm just going to create my new image. Okay, so web server. So I'm just creating it. So I have created a new snapshot. Okay, once you create a new snapshot, so it takes some time for you to create a new snapshot. Once you create the new snapshot, you can create an image out of that snapshot. So it means that you are just recording the recording the state of the server at that particular time. Okay. So if you could able to do that, okay. So then you can you can create your own image and that image can be used as your AMI while you are launching your EC2 instance. So create your image. So the name of the image is going to be web server by SRA, Sundarajan Ramaswamy. Okay, so I'm just going to create a new web server image for myself. And uh, you see, I'm just going to create it. So this is a EBS concept. So you see, I have created a EBS snapshot. So once the EBS snapshot is created, now you can just go and check in your AMI. It, is, it will be a little bit slow, I guess. So you have lot of I have lot of images in my AMIs, but I don't all want all those things. So maybe it takes some time. I just you see I have created it, but it is not coming. 
maybe launch instance my AMI. It's not there. Maybe take some time, wait. So I again repeat, you all can go for the marketing. So you can start your marketing. I don't know why it is not getting created. I had it. So web server again I am just going to create a image. So the image name is SRA web server Ubuntu and Apache with Apache. So this is what the thing is. So rename and the, the description. So I think it was created. And the kernel ID do RAM for size is default, everything is default now created. So the create new is received, new pending image, so it is just great. I think we can just check in the images. Yeah, it is there, I have created, so where is it? Yeah. So it is a such issue actually, uh, it is there actually, so it got created. You see, so this is the AMI name. So now what I can do is, while I am launching the instance directly, okay, launch, okay, launch, with this AMI, I can just choose my, uh, uh, I have choose to my AMI here, so I have choose my AMI here, web server admin. So this AMI is choose, and now you see, I can just review and launch it and I, now I don't have to do anything. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, you see, so I'm just going to tag it as my own AMI web server. Okay, so this is the tag that I'm just going to use it. So now if I'm connecting the, to that instance directly, okay, let's see what is happening. So maybe my uh, security group should be updated now. So I need to make it to allow my AD80 or otherwise at least my all TCP port. Yes, so I have allowed it. Okay. So once I have allowed it, maybe you can just see three instances are running. You see one is my own AMI. So I did not install anything on that. So now we will see what is happening. Just if I triggering this command, you see. So let's say what is happening. So automatically it needs to have my, I have the Apache installed on that machine. It should have it. Uh, maybe everything is uh, getting delayed in my account. So maybe after some time it will be okay. So maybe what I will do is I will just try to enter to this machine and see whether the Apache is installed or not. For sure it will be installed. Let's let's check it. Because it's my own AMI. In that AMI it was there, but maybe in this it, it, it's there or not we will see. So this can be also used if you don't have your perm key, okay. You have just, uh, mm, you have lost your perm key of that AWS. Even AWS cannot just retrieve the data on your cl cluster. So it, is, it depends on the security, okay. So maybe there is some mistake. So I cannot directly log in as a root. That is a problem here, you see. It is directly, yeah. Uh, directly asking us to log in as a root. So since since it is uh, just uh, what is that so it is my own EA AMI so it is trying to log in as a root that is not work that is that is a problem. So otherwise it, it will be good. Okay so it is taking some time. But that's fine. So this is not a big concept. 
So I'm just trying to tell you that uh, you can also create your own AMI by using this technique. And uh, you just need to remember, you have to use a snapshot. And with that snapshot, how to take that snapshot is by using the volumes. And the volume snapshot and create image and your new AMI will be created. Okay, so this is a more concept of the AMI. So the reason we will be linking uh, auto scaling with with this with the help of uh, AMI, right? Auto scaling and ELB concepts. No, 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 no. See that linking is will be done by using your uh, auto launch configuration. So you see the launch configuration will be there. Okay, since this much you are asking, okay. So, instant settings, okay. Attached to the auto scaling group. Which group I want to attach it now? So, I am just going to new group. You see, this is one thing that I can tell you. Can you try after this? Yes, no, I'll try. You just tell me. That I'll try. This is the answer. That's it. I, I told the answer to you. That's it. You see now. Now you you it this both the things are there in the ELB correct you understand right okay now you want to link this ELB and auto scaling correct yes sir what is this option tells so now we are going to attach these two sir I mean these two servers to auto scaling group so that the ELB also will get extended to the auto scaling group exactly. Okay. See, ELB is not getting extended means, uh, yeah, you can tell that in the layman terms like that. Yes, correct. Okay. Okay? Yes. Fine. So now what we will do is, uh, I have two options to you. You want me to explain the chef role and the environment and the, that, or I wa you want me to start the docker. So two things, either that we will do it or the docker we will do it. Just a moment. Yeah, I think I am going to take a pause. your decision so now talking about either two point two topics here so either you want the older topic which is just a little bit which is a leftover I need to do it Sundar. or I need to start the topic fresh off. Sundar uh, Mahendra yes yeah, Sundar. Yes. Yeah I mean like uh, I mean like uh, you said last class if I'm not wrong you said by Wednesday you're trying to close the classes right next Wednesday. Yes. Because you'll be out of station something. If you don't mind, uh, I know what are the concepts that we are going to cover by that time? Docker and uh, Puppet. Okay. It's left over topic. topic. So okay. Docker, S yes, and Puppet, yeah, I will give some uh, things, uh, um, modules to you. And uh, I have, I, I just created some uh, cookbook. Okay. So mm -hmm. in the chest. So I can also try to give that and uh, we can try to do that in Docker and also maybe in Puppet. Mm -hmm. So that kind of thing we will do it. Okay. Oh, no, you said we'll be you'll be giving us a project too, right, Sumar? Yes. So the project is nothing but yeah, I will give the project simple. So project will be very simple. That you will can do it, but uh, the thing which I am going to do, give it now, maybe you may not do it. Okay. I am just going to give you so that will Are we going to talk about any other AWS tools like Route 53, Elastic Cache? Mm, we will be talking about that. Uh, real time, we could not able to stimulate it. Okay. 
So that more things and all, it is not required. As we are just going to talk about the DevOps perspective of the AWS. Okay. So you have lot more concepts in AWS that will be covered by the pure AWS architect. So don't bother about it. So whatever this one. So one is VPC, EC2, uh, this uh, auto scaling, this uh, ELB and uh, the IAM and S3. So this service, if you could able to interlink between these things, it is well and good. Okay. If you are talking about the cloud formation, if you are going to talk about uh, RDS, yes, I will try to stimulate the RDS. I know I have one way to stimulate the RDS to you. Okay. And the other things are not just to know about that. That's fine. Just to only to just a marketing purpose, all those things. So cloud, okay. even CloudWatch we are not covering, Sundar? The cloud watch it is not able to see the problem here is whatever we have seen till now it's going to be a cloud watch okay so okay. you see here the cloud watch so what you can do is here maybe I don't have the cloud watch here yes I had the cloud watch most of the service okay. so the cloud watch is there, right yes so the cloud watch and all it is uh, I will just explain you but uh, it is it is it will, it will be very difficult to stimulate so those things and all which, which will be very difficult to stimulate with this such kind of real-time scenarios okay so I will tell you but anyways so cloud watch is there so you have to create a new dashboard so I have created two dashboards with me Okay, so basically you can just create a dashboard first of all. Okay, so it's going to be a demo. Uh, Mr. Who is that? Mm, money, something like that. Okay, so create a dashboard. So I am just going to create a dashboard with us now. So once the dashboard is getting created, you you can just choose. So you can just choose whatever you want. So which uh, which criteria, which kind of uh, mark, graph that you want. Okay. Yes, you can choose, and you you have created a lot of alarms already. Okay, so what you can do is uh, you can you can put your metrics into it. Okay, you should put your metrics into it. So either one of the metrics that you can just adapt in this graph. Okay, so you have a lot of metrics. So you have a lot of metrics for your uh, elastic uh, elastic uh, what is that block size? Okay. So which is for volumes or I don't want normally for volumes, you will be having for easy to instance. Click this easy to instance and you can just say mm, by auto scaling group or per instance metric. So maybe per instance metric. So this is the good one. Okay. So whatever instance we have before, it will be there. But what I am just going to say is uh, metrics are nothing but the measuring criteria. Okay. So web server one is there, you see. So for this web server one, I am just going to put some criteria over here. Okay, so which is uh, web server one, and uh, now what I am going to do is the disk read disk write. You see, lot of metrics are there network in network out so it it is whatever the requirement is there in the real time for sure some metrics should be there here okay disk write ops disk byte so cpu utilization so this is the best metrics that we are going to see often in the real time you see now now the cpu metrics so this is a matrix that it is going to be tracked okay for this i am just going to create a wizard okay so for this in the cloud watch we are going to see the CPU utilization of the particular server okay so this is the particular CPU utilization of the server and uh, you can just say okay action what is action is nothing but you can just create a new dashboard or all those things for this one so now what we are going to see here is we can link we can link your you see insufficient is there right 13 you see the alarms will be created and it is saying that insufficient okay so how this 13 is coming automatically I didn't do anything on the cloud watch right so in auto scaling whenever you are doing something in the auto scaling okay
So it is there. You see, yesterday we have created CPU utilization more than 80 percentage for one minute. Okay. So now you can just use this one. Okay. CPU utilization more than one percentage. So this can be added into the dashboard. Okay. This is or otherwise. Okay. So if you want, you can just modify or you can just add it into the dashboard. Now you see, I have added to my dashboard, and uh, what is what is this is nothing but you can just create this kind of uh, okay same thing line line based okay. So you can you can add it in the demo money this this uh, dashboard itself you can just add it. So like this, you have lot of dashboards which is available. Okay. Now you can just new wizard has been added to the dashboard demo money. You see now now I have added the new dashboard. So like this, you can you can you can just watch your uh, watch your CPU utilization of your particular server with this dashboard. So you you will be having lot of dashboards in your uh, real time scenario, and you can just see for one hour what is the result. So one hour what is the so you see the one hour what is the behavior of this. And the three hours, what is the behavior of this server? Okay, and uh, 12 hours, what is the behavior of this server? So, like this, you can just uh, you can judge for one day, three days. So, like this, it just goes. Okay, so so the, for a particular server, it can be monitored like this. Understand? So, like this, you can just create a wizard like that. So. It cannot be so. In my opinion, yeah, you can just understand what is this cloud watch? Yes. Okay. So theoretically, I will be explaining you what about the cloud watch rather than practically explaining. So I will be explaining this cloud watch, lambda, and uh, I will be saying about what is uh, cloud watch. Sorry, cloud formation, and I will be talking about uh, Route 53 and RDS and cloud front and glacier. Okay, Glacier. Okay, it is a rivalry of S3. Okay, so these are all the services that we will not be stimulating like this. What we are doing, like part of a real time, but we will be explaining that. Okay, to you. Understood. Oh, yes, sir. Um. So yeah, so I am waiting for the answer to you. Answer. So it is uh, fine. What we will do is we will be... Sundar, I have one more question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you just created AMI uh, manually, right? Instead of using Amazon, uh, what, what was already existing. What In real time scenario, will it be essential that we have to create Amazon machine image by ourselves? And what's Not scenario? required. Not required. Not required. So you don't have to create a manu manually your AMI. Only thing is, you can use it that uh, e EBS service. It is called Elastic Block Service. Okay. So what is a block is nothing but if you want to reload your volumes. Okay. If you want to reload your data or if you want to reload your volumes to the other machine, then you can use it. For okay. example, let's say let's say you don't have your pump key. What you will do now? You don't I'll have your pump key. Snapshot yeah. and then I'll use the volume and create yes, a yes. CMI. Yeah, exactly. yeah. In that case it will be helpful. So once it happened for me. Okay. Then even without Pumpkin we won't be having access, right? Even if we copy everything, will it have the new access? See, the data will not be lost. How you will retrieve the data from your cloud? Mm, okay. I don't I'm not I am I don't want the SIM card to me. I want the data, the contacts of the SIM card to with me. Okay, okay. So you'll have the data, and with the new instance and new AMI, you will have the new pump key, and you can access all those data. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Understood. So I'm just going to say. So, so that we'll discuss Chef and Iran's role soon today. Okay. So. I will give one cookbook to you guys. Okay, cookbook, uh, cookbook, cookbook. You see, you are, I will just put it in the chat so maybe everybody can take this. So what it happens here is so it is uh, 
first step is installing the Django, okay, and the Memcache software, and uh, it is also installing Python, okay, and it is also installing the Postgres and the Python, okay. So these are all the softwares that it is getting installed on one machine, and this is a cookbook in a real time how it looks like. Okay, so instead of just my by hotting the resource name, so maybe what you can do is you can just have this. I will also forward this to you. So I will just forward this to Mahendra. Is there one right? Mahendra Siddha. Which is Siddha? Second, Siddha second one. Yeah, second yeah. one. Okay. Now Vikram. So Pranita and Surya and Chetan and Vikram, V A P Vikram, right? Yes, Vikram and who are all there? Other than this? Hemant. Hemant, yes, I forgot Hemant. Hemant. Then Shiva. 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 Yes, I forgot Shiva. 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 S H I. Okay, that's it. Sahitya Sundar. Yeah, I'm forgetting. Sahitya S A. H I T T. Yes, yes. H I T T. Yes, I. Yeah. Sahitya Rakesh. R E K E S H right. Rakesh no. Ah, Sundar. Mine. Pranita. I introduced Pranita already. No, that is Pranit. Pranit, okay, Pranit, oh my god, okay, okay. Pranit is in my old student. So Rakesh, Duda, okay, and Kiran also. I'm forgetting Kiran, so these three guys. So Uday Kiran, no, no, no. Is Kiran ready, maybe? Yeah. And P R A Pranita. Pranita Sarana. Okay. Uh, no, no, Pranit. P R A N I T H U. P R A. Okay, so I am just sending this to you. What you can do is uh, what you can do is uh, some address is not found. Rakesh address is not found. So maybe you can just give Sahit, yeah. And I'm also putting that in chat also to you. Yes. So now we will talk about the chat roles and the environment. Okay. So let's see it in our uh, chess manage IO. Okay. Chess manage IO is there. I'm just going to leave that and uh, what is the thing is 24. So, okay. See, when we are talking about the role, okay. So, what is role? So, three things are very important here, okay. We talk about chef policy. P O L I C Y, chef policy. Okay. We talk about roles, okay. We talk about environment. E N V E I R O N M V E N T environment. Okay. So next is going to be attribute attributes. Okay. So attributes are very very important, and that attribute with O H A I O H I. So is very linked between that, and there is something called data backs. Okay. So which just it's a theoretical concept that we have to understand. So roles environment. Okay, what is this roles? So why the roles are required for the chef? So how you are going to think about it? Can you tell me? So how can you how can you make the, into the roles? So how can you link the chef things into the roles? Can you tell me? Any answers? What is that? No answer? No, I guess not. 
Okay. So okay. So why is the chef is required? So it is just the infrastructure, right? So to do something on the server, either application deployment or a software deployment or a configuration file management. Okay, the file should be synced in the in between the two files should be in the sync. So this is what. So what in the real time how to make it is so while you are doing the thing, so you can just say you it, it's going to be a web server. So if you need to create a web server after launching a server, so what are all the things you need to do? So you need to install the Java, you need to install the maybe for example Python, P Y T H O in Python. So P H P H O P Y Python. Next is going to be a Apache. Apache and next is going to be a Tomcat. And next is going to be a open SSL. And next is going to be a Next is going to be your application. So maybe it can be a jar or what. So this is how the things will be working. Correct? Do you understand? So in the world, not application. So application we will be doing it. It, it cannot be clubbed in, in, the, in that. So maybe the application can be a number of applications. So you just you can just generalize this as a web service. Correct? If you want to create a web server in the company, so for a new client, so these are all the tools and the prerequisite you have to use it. Correct? Do you agree with me? Yes, sir. So can I combine this as a role? So now what you need to do here is you need to have your... Um, <coughs> so what you need to have here is so you need to have all your cookbooks. So all your cookbooks. Okay. So cookbook should be clubbed together. Okay, so cookbook should be clubbed together to form the roles. Understood? So multiple cookbooks. So here the one word answer is multiple cookbooks. So multiple cookbooks will be creating your roles. So you create a role symbol and put your all cookbooks whatever you want. And instead of adding the each and every cookbook, because if a newcomer is there, you can just tell, okay, can you please create your uh, web server? So automatically he just puts your uh, role called the web server web server role into your uh, while he is doing the bootstrapping the machine. So you don't have to create your run list. You don't have to put all your uh, things uh, by mistake. If you are putting anything, you will be troubling, right? So. Now you understand what is the concept of role here? <coughs> uh, so like for each, uh, I mean like node. For each node, we'll be having different roles, sir. Right? In the sense, not just for node. I mean like for exactly. web server, we'll have a set of cookbooks. For yes. running particular application, we'll have a set of cookbooks. Exactly. One second. One second. I will be back. Just a moment. So it's nothing but set of cookbooks, we call it as a role. Let's say if I need to run a some particular application, let's say grand start for, for that I need mm -hmm. Java, Tomcat, Apache, Tomcat 8. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a com combination of these three cookbooks will be, I can name, uh, I can name the role as uh, for grants for, is, is that what we are talking about? Yes. yes. So, for example, if you want to install a Jenkins, how many, how many, how many cookbooks are required now? Four cookbooks. You know the, you know, you know that uh, correct uh, sequence. Sequence. Uh, have to see. So that yes. yes, this is what. So this is what. So lot of cookbooks will be having the dependency. So if you are changing the order, it will not be working. Mm -hmm. So if a guy is there uh, to create a new server, okay, mm -hmm. new infrastructure, he doesn't know, he, he, he will be having thousands of cookbooks maybe, okay. or maybe not thousands, so maybe hundreds of cookbooks. He okay. doesn't know what is, what is the link between the things, right? Yes. So the person who has created it, he knows it. But if he is, if you are making that as a specific role, so 
any server in the real time, you will not be just putting the server and keeping it to just uh, uh, um, do some puja, right? So either it's going to be an application server or it can be a web server okay. or it can be a database server or it can be something which is a middleware server or it can be a CI-CD server. So if it is a CI-CD server, what are all the things to be installed? You have to install Git on it. You have to install Maven. You have to install Jenkins. Jenkins. You have to install install all the plugins. Mm -hmm. You need to install Java, Maven, and if you want Ant and Artifactory should be there. So these tools should be installed over there, right? Yes. So can you call that as a role now? <coughs> yeah, we can. Now what? Yes. So now I am just going to create a role. I am just going to delete the role which I have created already. Okay. So I don't have any roles here now. Okay. So how to create a role? It is very simple here. So just go to the role and create it. So you see the policy. So you have different things are here. Okay. So now what is the first policy? It is nothing but one of the biggest policy is nothing but role. And I am just going to create a role. And uh, you see the role is going to be the web server. So in that web server, I am just going to put something. Okay. So it is good. I am just going to put the run list. Next is going to be the run list. So what are all the run lists I have? I am just going to put it. You see now, I don't know what are all the run lists for this role, right? So basically, first the Java is the one. So I need to install Java, and I need to install the <coughs> Java app. So what is a Java app? Java app is a recipe which is having my application, right? Deployment of application will be done by using this cookbook. So now if I create the so. Now if I create the role, it will be created. You see, now the role is created. Okay. With the version. So, if you are just, you can ask me, how should I use the role, Sundar? In, so, you can use that in the node. So, go to the node and instead of just specifying a, specifying a cookbook, so a run list, okay. So instead of specifying the cookbook here, what you can simply do here is, you can just put web server. That's it. Okay. So, so you don't have to mention any recipes here. So this is the subset. So this role is having is a superset of this recipes. Correct? Yes. Sir. So in a real time, it will not be like that. So a lot of recipes will not be there. So you will be just putting the roles and roles will be having the cookbook. That will be decided by the solution architect itself. So solution architect will be deciding what is the role that has to be created. Okay. <clears throat> now if we are just saving this run list, it will be saved. Okay. Now you understand what is the role and the cookbook and how it is linked with your uh, run list? Yes, so one doubt on that. So is it not the role of uh, DevOps engineer to create roles? Yes, it is. Okay. And see, uh, we were just talking about the order of the cookbooks for running a particular mm -hmm. application. That will have any, I mean, like we need to, uh, I mean, think in a logical way and do it, or is there any way for placing them in order? Uh, no, trial and error method. That is the reason that uh, you can use the uh, kitchen to test it, whether it is working correctly or not. Okay. Correct. Yes, sir. But uh, you can use that in the uh, workstation itself. But if the workstation is in Windows, you are doing something in the Linux or uh, Ubuntu means you need to use the kitchen. Sorry, kitchen to do that. Vagrant and kitchen to do that. Okay. But you should know it and you will be knowing it. It is very, very logical. Okay. So now there is something called... Uh, okay. So before that, I am just going to explain you something called att attributes, okay? You see attributes. So what do you think about the attributes? Attribute is nothing but Sundar. Sundar is a trainer. He is in India. He is a boy. And he is working in the IT, IT field. So everything is attribute for a Sundar, right? Yes, sir. So now, each and every node is having the attributes. Okay, so the main 
think about this. It is for all the deployment tools which is same. So if you are going to talk about uh, the deployment, what I told, deployment is having in a three ways, correct? So either you have to just deploy, one second. So here, each and every server is having the deployment of software and uh, attribute. So this attribute is called as a configuration management. Okay. If you want to change the port or if you want to see the attribute, if it is attribute is equal to this one and do this, so it means you see and the memory is attribute. Okay, so each and every node will be having the attributes. Okay, so this one, if they are asking about what is attribute, so you have to tell this. So the basic attribute can be a Linux OS. You see the kernel, so the OS is nothing but the Linux and the version is going to be this one and it is generic inside this server. And if you talk about the memory, okay, the swap is this much and uh, the, so all the things is getting, <coughs> the total memory of this is nothing but this one. So these are nothing but attributes. Understood, guys. So it is defining the defining the variables or the when we local variables of the server. So that is called as attributes. So what you can do is uh, normally you can override the attributes also. Okay, you can override the attributes. Okay. So to make that, that is called as a data bag. So data bag is nothing but I, I cannot create it stim and stimulate it for you. Okay. So now you can understand the data bag is nothing but for example, uh, okay. We will talk about this data bag uh, later. Okay. After you understanding this roles and responsibility, sorry, roles and environment, we will talk about the data bag later. But uh, now <coughs> I told you, right, for this thing, for this servers okay you can set the attribute i have not given any attributes for this server so if you have if you have may, may mentioned any attribute in this edit column so inside this if you are just changing any attribute like a memory or a port or a, that port number or any kind of one of the attribute which is user defined attribute if it is getting changed so while the cookbook is getting deployed so after the cookbook is getting deployed, this attribute will also be deployed. So which is the, the variables of the servers will be changed according to this attributes. So just you need to understand that. So if they are asking you that uh, are you going to just, uh, <coughs> can you use the attributes in the role means you have to say yes. So that's the reason while I'm creating the role, you see, while I'm creating a role, I didn't tell about this because you will be confused. So I just say demo role, okay? And uh, it's something which is, so run list is nothing but, uh, I'm just creating one, one of the run list here, that's, that's it. So now I have created it before, but you have to give next. And if you have any attributes, you have to mention it here. And now the override attribute, so default attributes is there. And if you want to either the, the already the attribute will be there. For example, the default port of the application will be there. If you want to again override the default port, that you can do it here. Okay, which is possible by the overriding attributes. So, but you don't have to be very specific on this. So up to this is enough. Okay, but still you need to understand what is the attribute. So create the role and it will be created. With attribute or without attribute, the role will be created. But uh, <coughs> you just let, understand what is this attribute. That's enough for me. And uh, we will be talking about the data bag later. But we will be, I just I will complete what is environment and client. Okay. Okay. So environment. So normally, you know, as the as the name is just environment. So it it is very good to create the server in the particular environment while we are creating itself. So after a few minutes, I will be telling the bootstrapping command. So you can create the environment. For example, normally the people will be in the real time. Only three to four environments will be there. One is dev already I have created. Another will be UAT. So UAT is nothing but something user acceptance testing. Okay. 
So you can just create the environment like that. Okay. So UAV environment is there and the dev environment is there and default is the environment which just will be created automatically for any organization. Okay. So one can be a default environment but nobody will be having the servers in the default environment. Till now we don't know about it. That's the reason we were keeping that thing in the default environment. But either you can use the UAT or a dev environment to do that. Okay. So the production environment. So the production environment can also be, so you will be just administrating this environments. Okay, you don't have to give the permission to the clients and the users. Only the admin will be having the access to the production environment servers. So that is also the security reason that you can try to do it. Okay, so now I have created the UAT environment, right? So how it is going to be used is nothing but the nodes. Okay, you just go to the nodes and defaultly the nodes are created in the this environment, right? So what you can do is just, you can just action, okay? So, <coughs> yeah, you see here, the default is there. Now the UAT environment. So you can just, after creating it in the default also, you can just change it by using this just V automatically to this kind of UAT environment. So now this server belongs to the UAT server and this server belongs to the development server. So easily just you can identify what kind of server it is. So this is an advantage of it. So now if I'm just uh, refreshing it, it will be cleared. So now the UAT things will be created. You see the UAT is created. So either you can do this here after doing the bootstrap or on the process of bootstrap itself, you can just you can just say you can assign the role and you can also assign the uh, environment to the server by using the bootstrap command also. So if you are just checking the bootstrap command like this, so till now we were seeing the simple bootstrap command. So maybe you can check it bootstrap AWS node. Okay, so if you are just saying bootstrapping a node, so you see nice bootstrap. Maybe we will see whether they are, they are just using this or not. Yeah, the nodes. No, they are not using the. Here it is just a bootstrap, simple bootstrap. So we will be saying bootstrapping a node with uh, roles and environment. Okay, so the bootstrap command, creating and bootstrapping the environment at the production. So this is the syntax, default syntax if we say, oh, let's see. You see? So while you are just putting the node name you can put and the environment, if you have the environment with the correct name, so previously we don't have it, so if I am putting it will not be working. So you can just put in the run list column, you can just put the role. So one is the base role is there and other is a web server is there, you see? So this is the role that you can do it and the environment is also possible and you can do this. So and this one and all you, you know about that. Okay. And uh, this is a way that uh, you can create your uh, environment and the run list by yourself. Okay. After you have created it there. Just a moment. Yeah, guys, go ahead. Yeah, so you understand this? We'll be talking about data bags. Uh, I will be telling data bags uh, uh, next time. So data bags is uh, something which is used to search. The, it is like an index, okay, to search the token and the password, you can just store the username and the password in the data, ba data bags. But uh, <coughs> now leave it. If I'm telling you, you will, you will be confused. Now try to understand only the roles, sorry, roles and the environment in your uh, things. Okay? Um, okay, Sundar. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, like Docker, it's going to take two days or how much? Like how are we yes. going to break it, Docker and uh, the puppet? Why? No, no, because you said by Wednesday, so like if you can extend the class or sort of thing, so I mean, like if you can take extra time. Yeah, yeah. Now you see, we have taken one and a half hours. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, so we will do it, no issue. So Docker two days, 
So maybe two or three days and the puppet two days. Okay. So because so again we have this project to write. So at least if you can uh, you know, provide us one day for uh, you know, doing troubleshooting part. See, project and all it takes for sure four to five days for you. Maybe. Okay. Okay. So project, uh, do you think that it is going to be end in uh, one or two days? So if you are going to do it, that's good. But uh, the project is simple. You can just take it right now itself. You can start it. I want the Hello World our program should be there in Git. Mm -hmm. Or simple. I want the Grand Start application. Okay, Grand Start War. Let's leave about Hello World our program. Okay. So I want this Grand Start War should be deployed by using CI/CD by using Chef. I want by using Puppet and I want by using Docker. And it has to be followed from the Artifactory Jenkins. So that's it. <coughs> and if possible, you try to do this uh, cookbook, so which I have given to you, right? Yes, sir. So this cookbook, I will not tell you. So you try to work in Ubuntu or CentOS or uh, Red Hat Linux. I don't know. You check it and you do it. Okay. So I have already told the answer to you now. So you check it and do it. So one of the mission is going to be there, but you execute and you have an error and solve it. Uh, the project work we are talking about, uh, we are going to uh, com complete it, uh, like we are going to do it after post completion of the class or how is it? So, no? See, it depends. So, the up to this, uh, up to this, uh, I think uh, without Docker and Puppet, I think you can do it now, correct? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. So, uh, you try to do the things in AWS also. Okay. So, first of all, try to do the things in. Uh, AWS, VPC, all those things, whichever I have told you, VLB and the auto scaling, everything. So try to do that, and after that you come back to this. Okay. So you are going to provide some task or how is it, sir, for the project? I clearly told you the task right now. No. No, like uh, no, we are uh, like uh, my point is here. Uh, like uh, we are we are thinking that we are going to do everything together, CI, CI integrated with all the CLPs and. Uh, uh, auto scaling together. Like how yes, we are going to work. Uh, that is what I am telling. See, think uh, Vikram, right? Ah, yes, Vandar. Yes, so think Vikram. If I am telling everything to you, what you will do then in the project? No, no, I am saying. Uh, okay, Sundar, I will come, come to you. Like, uh, no, no, no. I want this. To, you have to tell me, right? You have to tell me how you are going to link this. I told all the concept to you. Okay. You are making me to tell the answer now. I don't want to do that. So you okay. told that, yeah. I told Grand Start War is a trump card to you. Okay. And you know what is auto scaling. You know what is web server. Okay. You know what is application server. Are you? Are I, uh, am I going to stop instead of web server today? If I am putting, if you are putting the application Tomcat server 8080, am I going to stop you in ELB or auto scaling? Uh, no. Yeah, this is the answer. I you already have an answer for this to this uh, to your question now. I told the answer to you. Oh, sir. okay, so that's got you. Okay, so you you first of all come with the architecture diagram to me. How you are going to set up your architecture now? Okay. So everyone, you try to yeah, you try to now link between all these things and try to come up with your uh, solution design first of all. Okay, fine. So how you are going to split? So two days for Docker and two days for Puppet. So this is what my plan is, and uh, one day I will be talking about uh, not one day. It is maybe 25 minutes. We can talk about Ansible also. Okay, it might be helpful for you. Okay, you can just say for marketing purpose. Yes. Whatever we, you did here, so you can just say you did in Ansible also. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Fine. So. Uh, uh, there, uh, I have a couple of questions here. Uh -huh. uh, see, there, like, uh, see, most of the things, uh, uh, technically, we have, uh, like, whatever you taught us, we are fine with it. Like, most of the things we are, are trying to do it as soon as possible, you have completed the class. Uh -huh. Yeah, one thing, uh, being from a different background, uh, we could not able to understand if, uh, like, if we wanted to uh, like portray that we have worked on this and worked on this, we wanted to know like the business process involved in this. Uh, like, let us say, if you can give us an example uh, of end-to-end -end business process, like probably once we you come up with a project, 
probably you can explain, uh, take some 20 minutes or 15 minutes and explain us how the end-to-end -end, uh, business process will flow. That would help us to be confident in an interview or something. Okay, I will give the complete business process from uh, how the uh, <coughs> CRM. From the basic level to, yeah. uh, like, let's say, uh, like, uh, from how we start and how we end the project, uh, that's what, if you can give us an overview, we will be a little confident while uh, answering them. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, what are all the teams involved? Where is the request is coming? Where is the team is ending? And what is the workflow? All those things I will try to give it, okay? Yes, on this. Thanks. Okay. Bye bye. See you. So see you tomorrow on the same time, guys. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thank you.